Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tsai. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to run Crusader Kings 3 much faster on Apple Silicon Mac than the official Mac port. That's because the official port is only getting around 5 to 15 FPS, even on my very fast, very expensive M1 Max chip. However, there is a way to fix this if we run the Windows version of Crusader Kings 3 through the compatibility layer called Crossover, then we're going to get far better performance up to 10 to 20 times faster than the original Mac port. So today I'm going to show you the full tutorial, how to install Crossover, how to get the Windows version of Crusader Kings 3, and how to get it running the best on Apple Silicon hardware. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So the first step is going to be to click the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you do make a purchase through this link, then you'll be helping to support the channel and the work that I do. So once you get to the Crossover website, what you can do is scroll down and then we can go ahead and click the Buy Now button and you'll be taken to the Purchase page. So what we're interested in is Crossover Plus, which is the main Crossover product. So this entitles you to the Crossover 22 license, which is the current one at the time of recording. If Crossover releases an additional in the future, for example, crossover 23 next year, then you're going to be able to get that as well. And currently the price for this is $74. However, if you type in the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki and then the arrow button, you're going to be able to get a 25% discount. Also, once you've made a purchase, you can go into your account and then go to my account here. If you click on support licenses and then renew now, and then you find your current license and click renew now, you'll be able to get $40 off your renewal price too. So if you follow the link in the description and you make a purchase or a renewal, then I'll earn a small commission and you'll be helping to support the channel and the content that I create. You can also do this renewal multiple times and renew many years into the future at a discounted Right. However, what you can also do is go back to the main page and then click the try now button. And this is going to give you a 14 day free trial. If you do decide to make a purchase, then please make sure to follow the affiliate link at the top of the description. Here, we're going to press try now. So here, we're going to enter our name and email address and then click the download trial now button. So once the file is downloaded, we're going to go to our finder and then we're going to go to our downloads folder. So now that we have crossover downloaded, we're going to go ahead and double click on the zip file. And once that has extracted, what we're going to do is to hold on the file itself and then drag and drop it into our applications folder and then let go. So within applications, we're going to scroll down and find our crossover application and double click. So what we're going to do now is click the install button and then we're going to install Steam. So if it's not here, then you can type it into the search bar here and then we can find the Steam button here. And then we're going to go ahead and press the install button. And this is going to install and create the bottle defaults for us so that we can get Windows version of Steam running on the Mac. So whenever a pop-up window comes up like this, press press yes, it's just installing some fonts. Here we're going to press next and accept all the terms and agreements. Just press next here and then install, press finish. So this is now the Windows Steam setup window. I'm going to press next and then we'll install this in its default location and then press run Steam. And now Steam is downloading here and also the bottle, which is where the software is located, is also listed here as well. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and complete the Steam setup installation. So now we're going to go ahead and log into our Steam account. If you don't have a Steam account, you can create one for free here. So here Steam Guard is asking us for a confirmation code. I'm going to go into my email account and then type in the one that's been emailed to me now then press finish. So now we just wait for Steam to load up. It just takes a few moments. So now the Steam software has loaded up. We can go ahead and install any Windows versions of games that we want. So we're just going to come back to the crossover bottle window here. One of the main things that you should be aware of is that you should turn on DXVK, especially if we're running any particular games that use DirectX 10 or 11. And this will provide compatibility. That's the main tip. So another thing that you can do is to enable the DXVK HUD so you can see more frame rate details. So to do that, within Finder, we press Go at the top here and then hold down the Option key to reveal Library. And then within the library, we open up Application Support, and then we scroll down and then we find Crossover, then we expand this, and then we expand the Bottles folder. And here we're going to expand our bottle, which is Steam, and then we're going to find cxbottle.conf. Control click on this and click Open With, and then open with Text Edit. And if we scroll down to the bottom of Text Edit, what we need to do is to add this command here, dxvk underscore HUD equals full, surrounded by these straight quotation marks. And then once we're done, we press File and then Save. And then when we get into the game, we're going to see a much more detailed frame rate counter. So once we have Steam installed, we're going to go to our library and want to find Crusader Kings 3. So if you don't have this in your library already, you can go to the store and you can make a purchase of this game. However, I'm assuming you've already got this game, so I'm going to go to library and then we're going to go ahead and install Crusader Kings 3. I'm going to put it into its default location and press next. So just wait for this to complete downloading before we can move on to the next step. So once Crusader Kings 3 has downloaded, what you're going to find is that if you try to launch the game, it's going to crash. So what we're going to need to do is to downgrade this. So what we're going to do is right click 
click on the entry in the library, go to properties. Here we're going to go to the beta section here. And here you can actually opt into a previous version of Crusader Kings. So if we play with none, that means we're using the latest version. However, if I scroll down, we can see other versions of the game. And I'm going to use the stable version that worked with Crossover previously, 1.6.1.2. That's because the 1.7.0 causes a crash in Crossover. So I'm going to use the old version here. So now that that's done, I'm going to close this and it's saying here update. So I'm going to press update. That's going to make some changes to the game and it's going to download some of the missing files that have changed since the latest update. It's only 13 megabytes, so just wait for that to finish. So here you can see Crusader Kings 3 1.6.1.2. That's now ready to play, so we're going to press play now. Here it's installing some dependencies and then it's starting to launch. Here it's asking us to install the launcher and press next. And I'm going to install the launcher in its default location and press install. So when I launched the game, the launcher started. I'm going to press get started. I'm going to skip the launcher account setup, agree to the end user licensing agreement, press continue, agree to the terms of use, and now I'm going to press play. So now Crusader Kings 3 has launched, and we can go ahead and play the game. So you can see that the frame rate on the menu is okay, it's just loading up, just wait for that to finish loading up the menu. So here I want to do is to press new game, and want to launch a new game. Here I'm going to play as King Harold of England and just load this up and just see what the frame rate is like. So I'm going to set this at 1080p with the high quality preset. At the beginning, the shaders will need to compile in order to move between the kind of zoomed in view to the outside view. But once you've done it once, then basically it's very smooth. So I'm just going to show you at the maximum zoom level, we're getting around 83 frames per second. And at the outside map view with the corner here, we're getting around 108. So on the left hand side, we have the official Mac port, which is only getting around 5 to 12 FPS, whereas the Windows version running through Crossover 22 is getting much, much faster frame rates in the region of around 90 to 110 FPS. So the Windows Crossover 22 version is running around 10 to 20 times faster than the official Mac port. So I'm not really that familiar with Crusader Kings 3, and I think I am right in saying that the frame rate will tank a bit as time goes on and more units appear on the game map. However, even at this very early stage in the game, the frame rate is completely different. So therefore the crossover version is gonna be the way to go when playing this game. If you'd like to find out more about games that are compatible for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please make sure to check out the M1 Compatible Games Master List. I'll leave a link to this in the description. This contains a really long list of games which are compatible through the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, whether it's running natively through ARM, through Rosetta 2, or one of the compatibility layers such as Crossover or Parallels. So please check it out. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Please also make sure to check out the Apple Gaming Wiki YouTube channel. This contains a playlist of game benchmarks that I performed on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, and there are literally hundreds of games which I've tested. So please check this out. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. So anyway, this is how you get Crusader Kings working on the Apple Silicon Mac through Crossover. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.